Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm very excited to have Jason Womack. Jason is the author of Your Best Just Got Better, Work Smarter, Think Bigger, Make More. Jason has worked with everyone from a gold medal winning Olympic swimmer, global investment portfolio managers, engineers who have designed spacecraft. You can't get much different than that. Founders of large and small size startups. Now he's spoken on executive presence and leadership at such universities which you've heard of as Harvard Business School, Tuck Business School, the University of Memphis, San Diego University, and many more. And he's founder of GetMomentum.co, which helps people create and sustain momentum in their work and lives. Jason, thank you so much for joining me. Jeremy, it's great to be back. I was watching our previous conversation, realizing you know we left a few things out, but hey, you can't cover everything at one time anyway. So no, we'll get it this time around. Invitation. We'll get it this time around. And you know, since it's Inspired Insider, you know, especially you teach people how to get momentum. So I want to find out what pushes you forward despite adversity, and that's momentum, I guess. As I was reading through this, so you're the perfect person. So I wanted to hear. Tell me a moment when you had to overcome a low point or a huge challenge in your life. You know, as I was thinking about that, Jeremy, two kind of separate things came to mind. One was a specific low point. Mm -hmm. Another one is kind of a a reintroduction to low point. And I I think I'd like to talk about that one first. And then if we have time over here. And, you know, I I want to preface all of this by saying I'm going to talk about some stuff that's pretty personal, so just kind of mm. prepare yourselves for that. I appreciate it. Uh, but, but gang, um, Jody, my wife, and I, we've been together for 21 years. We met in college, actually sitting next to each other in a history class. And very early on in our relationship, we started, I'm going to put this in air quotes, we started working together. And this was before we were dating, um, before we were in a relationship, we were actually editing each other's work, editing each other's papers. And what wound up happening was we figured out a way to critique the work that that other person did Mm -hmm. as separate from who the other person was. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 22 years, we've started three companies together. We currently co-manage Get Momentum. And why I say we have to kind of regroup through those low points is, Jeremy, we're in charge. We're, we're the ones that at the end of the day, we have to decide, is this on course? Is this part of your dream? Is this part of where you wanted to go? And there have been some times, and, and we have a rule. Actually, we have, we have a couple of rules, Jeremy. Uh, one of them is we have a rule that says no pop quizzes. Okay. Meaning we can't be out on a walk, out in the woods, at the end of a day where we're enjoying nature. I can't turn to her and say, hey, did we sign the Wilson contract or something like that, right? She doesn't have the, no pop quizzes. But but the other one is we don't both get to freak out at the same time. And this was huge because as those of you out there who are small to mid to large business owners, CEOs, founders, there's going to be freak out. And so Jody and I, we are able to go through and kind of anticipate, you know, hey, what might be freaking me out? And can I just raise my hand and say, hey, babe, I'm 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 scared, I'm nervous, I'm frustrated, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed out. And then that kind of is the early warning system where if there's something that she's in that zone about, gotta pick it up, gotta gotta retrench back into there. And so there's some tactics and strategies that we've come to use over the past two decades of of how do we get back when we fall into that, uh, <laughs> I have the mental image of a bowling alley and that bowling ball that just always wants to fall into the gutter, it seems like. Right. How do we pull out of that, right? Yeah. How do we get out of that? There's always a rule because it happened, right? So what was that time where you both had a freak out? It was right after, maybe six months after she had left a full-time job and I was completely frustrated in the, the company that I was working in. And she wasn't ready to take on anything on yet. And I was ready to jump ship. And I remember we, we had this kind of come to you know who meeting about, mm-hmm. 
I'm freaked out because you're not wanting to go back and, and find a job or get a job. And she was freaked out because I wanted to go out and start something on my own. Right. And um, it's pretty common. Know, it, took, it took a couple of weeks for us to kind of rally around, circle mm. the wagons, if you will. Yeah. Um, and I, and I remember that we had, we had a conversation with a mentor of us, of ours. And literally he had me go, I'm looking over at my whiteboard. He had me go to my whiteboard and we did that Benjamin Franklin pro con list. Mm. What are the pros of going out on your own? What are the cons of going out on your own? And it was really the first time that Jody and I could, you know what it was? We objectively saw through someone else's eyes, Mm. the stuff that we were, that we were, um, stewed about. Yeah. That's smart. I was going to ask how you sifted and got through that, but it sounds like you went to a mentor. I'm telling you, and, and those of you who have read any of my stuff or if this is your first introduction to me, uh, I have a saying to every client I ever get to work with, and the saying goes like this, a year from now, you'll be who you are, you'll have what you have, and you'll make what you make based on the five people you spend time with this weekend. Yeah. And that's every weekend, by the way. So this weekend, I'll spend time with five people, and in a year, I'll be able to track back. What did we talk about that weekend, and what do we have right now? Yeah. Um, the other one, for those of you who are in any kind of BD business development, a year from now, the clients, customers, and vendors that you're the best um, uh, working the best with, that'll depend on who you call this afternoon. So the more that I can kind of take that, what am I doing right now? And how will that manifest itself coming toward me? Um, I, I, don't, I haven't found a downside in that one yet. Yeah. So what's a, a, a mentor that you've had and a great piece, another great piece of advice they've given you? Uh, you know, I got a mentor of mine. I write about, uh, write about him in the book, actually. And he worked for Apple a long time ago under Steve Jobs when he was CEO the first time. And this guy, he headed up their science lab. They actually had a, a science lab where they were studying how people were interacting with the technology they were building. And he really pushed on me to understand, to think through, and to, he called it, what are the unintended consequences of the product and service that you make? Mm-hmm. And he says, the problem is, Jason, we don't know what the unintended right. consequences are until they show up. And he said, anything you can do, and he just he equated it to the game of chess, Jeremy, where he said, look, it, chess is a game of unintended consequences because you can't look at the chessboard like your opposition, but you can anticipate, predict, and adapt. Mm-hmm. And so what Rao really helped me do, he helps me do consistently for every product we release to the market is at least let me do a few work sessions, thinking sessions, bicycle riding sessions, um, beer sessions, at least have a couple of conversations with what can we anticipate the unintended yeah. consequences yeah. of releasing to this public to the public uh, produce. Yeah. So what's the unintended consequence that you saw with something? So get momentum actually is our fourth uh, how should I say it? It's our fourth foray into the membership community product. And the first three had their their fits and starts. But really, this one came from Jeremy. I, I wrote this book called Your Best Just Got Better. It's the three things that you need to be better at a year from now if you're going to get promoted, if you're going to start a new company, if you're going to sell your company. And we had a lot of people who would read the book, call or email and say, Jason, the book was great. Read it last weekend. Uh, three days have gone by, and I've done nothing that I read about. Hmm. I was thinking, man, I, I laid it all out there, right? There's there, there's 42 activities in the book that you could do. Well, they kept using this word momentum, as in I lost momentum. Hmm. I can't get momentum. Momentum is gone. And I thought to myself, I was like, wait a minute. A lot of people talk about, you talk about inspiration. What's the next thing that I know I need? Well, it's almost like in, inspiration is almost in the middle, right? I kind of mm-hmm. have the, the kick, I have the inspiration, right. and then I have the continuation. Right, right. So I wanted to play a part in that third one. So unanticipated consequence, unintended consequence. Got an email from a guy in New York. He went to one of the programs I ran for his company, got the book, read the book. He joined Get Momentum for three, three months. 
And in those three months, he said he learned how to save 30 minutes a day. He applied that 30 minutes a day savings to becoming a big brother. You know, the big brother, big yeah, sister. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Became a big brother. 20 months after that, he saw his little brother apply to and get accepted at a major Ivy League school. Wow. And he's starting, uh, he's starting fall semester this semester. That's amazing. I could not have said, oh, and one of the things I would like get momentum to provide is right. the ability for people to be a big brother and see their, their little brother go on to, I, I would never have thought about yeah. that. Yeah. People do use it however they want. Now, I appreciate you sharing because I know some of those are personal, especially with a husband and wife founding team. And you said there was another specific instance that uh, you overcame. And this one, I think, you know, this one goes out, uh, you know, I want to dedicate this song, right? This one goes out to all of you who are on the fence or have recently left a community. So uh, many years ago, I actually started my career as a high school teacher uh, back uh, 15 years ago now. Well, maybe I left 15 years ago. So 19 years ago, I started. And I don't know if anybody's ever worked in education, you've all been in education, but education as an employee is this weird dynamic where you're in this bubble and you support each other, you go to barbecues with each other, you fill in for each other. And Jeremy, when I left that community, um, can't, I, I, I still don't understand it, and this is almost two decades later, but it was almost like this... <laughs> It would be the equivalent of losing all your contacts in your mobile phone. Like overnight, that community went away. Wow. Phone calls weren't returned. It's a culture calls. shock, yeah. And 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 you know, I, I think about it and I've had two conversa I've had conversations with two people that I used to teach with. Well, actually one just about three nights ago, and he brought it up again, you know. I mean, this is what he said, Jeremy. He says he says, you know, Jason, your picture is still up in the teacher's lounge. And I looked at him, and then I smiled, and I said, oh, it's the dartboard, isn't it? <laughs> and he laughed. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and and it, was, it was an amazing slash difficult experience to realize the only thing that bonded us was this job. Um, I, don't even, I don't even know what the word is. But, but realizing how fickle and how temporary communities can be when you're the one who's making change. When I went from being a high school teacher right. in one classroom 180 days a year to being a teacher around the world 180 days a year, we suddenly had nothing in common. Hmm. So why do you think that discontinued? You know, I, I only have my own opinions of the matter. Um, but look, at every single one of us, all of you watching this right now, you can bring to mind somebody who the more successful you got, the more frustrated they got with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how many times have I heard someone say, oh, I could never start my own business. I need insurance. Right. And I'm thinking, I, I could find you insurance. I mean... You know, let's not let that three hundred dollar a month bill, you know, keep you in a place that you don't want to work for another fifteen mm -hmm. years. How was that transition for you? I know that's tough, not just community wise, but making the transition, leaving the career that you studied. Oh man, um, you know, talk about night and day, one hundred eighty degrees, black and white. I mean, I went from having a job where the state of California gave me a curriculum and said, "Go teach all of this." to a curriculum where I essentially reach out to people who are doing work, good work, hard work, tough work, big work, and asking people, I mean, here, here's my marketing plan uh, for those of you who are starting anything in the information side of business, but my marketing plan is I meet people, however I can do that, seat me on an airplane, next table over at a restaurant, conference if I'm attending or speaking, yeah. and a question I'll ask if I get that entree, I'll ask, what are the leadership difficulties your company is dealing with? What course or class or coaching program could you imagine them needing? And can I pitch? Can I offer something up? And so early on, Jeremy, I got kind of pegged as a time management guy. Mm -hmm. But then I kept writing articles about the fact that you can't manage time. You manage what you do in time. Right. So then I got known as, oh, Jason's the guy that helps us think through 
prioritization, organization, yeah. and, and product creation. Yeah. So who was one of your first clients that you felt was a big breakthrough for you? Awesome. Well, well for, let me do this one. How did I make my prospect list? Because that's, that's a fun story. Again, okay. for those of you who are starting out or in that beginning stage. So you're very organized. You have a prospect list. So. I do. I, I like I, that. I yeah. did. Well, I had nothing, right? Because the company, I, I yeah. left teaching. I went and worked for another company. Yeah. And then we started our own thing. Yeah. And uh, I had one of those you know, California non-compete laws, which I just took to mean I'm not even going to reach out to the people that I used to work for. I'm literally going to start from scratch. And so my marketing plan was this. I, I went to my garage, my closet, and my desk drawers, and I made a list of every company I'd ever bought something from. Hmm. Toyota, Specialized Bicycles, Cole Haan, Apple, Dell, Plantronics. I mean, I'm just listing things that are around me, right? Mm -hmm. Then I went over to LinkedIn and I started searching for the companies and I looked for titles, leadership development, leadership programs, human resource management, anything that I could equate, that's a company I've spent money on before and that's a person who may be able to bring me in. And LinkedIn has the, um, it's that program, I don't know, I pay a couple hundred bucks a month to send in mail yeah. where I can actually send someone a mail via LinkedIn. So the first client, the first breakthrough client, Patagonia Outdoor uh, uh, Wear. Yeah. Uh, those of you who know Patagonia. Yeah, for sure. And I reached out to a couple of people there. I said, hey, what's a leadership need that you have? And if I could offer a course, what would you like it to be about? And sure enough, they got back. And they said, well, we need a class on delivering effective feedback. They, they wanted to help their managers learn about the psychosocial aspect of the economics of delivering feedback. So they'd have salespeople they, need, they needed to give feedback to, but they had to understand how does that work psychologically, how does that work sociologically. Yeah, nice. And I know you are the master of steps and action steps, so I want to know some of the action steps that people should start doing now that's brought you success with overcoming some of the challenges. You know, one of the things about what Jody and I do is, is the steps that we'll share with you, we're really just qualifying because you're already doing them. So for example, I could talk about, you know, here's one. Uh, we call it the ideal day process. Everyone I've ever talked to, if I asked them, hey, are you going on vacation this year? Um, are you going to a party this year? Uh, do you have people coming into your company to give them a tour of your product line this year? There's so many things I could ask them. And then if I say, Tell me how you'd like that vacation, that party, or that client visit. Tell me how you like it to go. They'll get a big smile and they'll say, oh, wow, you know, the clients will come in. We're going to have a, a nice bagel and coffee breakfast. It'll be clean. All the lights will be on in the ceiling. I mean, I'm just kind of making stuff up here. Right. They'll start to create what I call an ideal day. An ideal day for me is a simple process of imagination, or as I say, image in. I'm imaging in what it is I'd like to see. It's not necessarily a plan. It's not necessarily a this must happen or else. But look it. If you're on your way to work and there's a lot of traffic around you, there's an accident up, up, up in front and you're going through what could go wrong that day, right. I've seen people actually manifest more things going wrong. <laughs> if, if this is as powerful as I think we think it is, let me do a little bit of visioning about what the ideal day is could be. Yeah. And the reason that I say you're already doing it is people are always casting out a vision of what they anticipate coming toward. Yeah. So if we're more aware of it, then we can control it more. And then yeah. I can start to plan for it. Yeah. You know, so if I, I I've, I've scripted out ideal days, I've, I've probably written about 1,200, 1,300 of these in, in the past wow. 20 years. It's amazing. And, and well, what it is, is, I just ask myself, what's a cool day coming toward me? Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to hang out with my family on the lake. Ideal day. But, and I'll just start drafting, just start writing. Yeah. I always handwrite mine, by the way. Um, typing and handwriting are different for me. Um, I've written ideal days for racing triathlon. I've written ideal days for going on dates with Jody. I've written ideal days. I wrote an ideal day for the day I bought my most recent car. So what's the strangest ideal day that you actually mapped out? That's a great question. Hang on a second. I'm going to say it was working with the Olympic athlete 
because um, there were so many interesting things that led up to that. She found my writing on Twitter, went to my blog, went to my website, called the office. They did the whole deal. They told me, hey, this person wants to work with you. And uh, uh, gosh, I mean, I don't want to go into too many details here. Um, so she now, at this point, when I worked with her, she represented Nike Swim. And she sold swim gear to mm. colleges west of the Mississippi. So basically any college that was going to buy swim gear from Nike went through her. Mm -hmm. Well, she worked out of her office. She had two kids. And her husband was also a former pro athlete. Wow. Anyway, the reason that this was the most interesting to me, it was the one that came to mind, is I lived in their house for three days. Really? And as a coach, How is that? I, meet, I mean, I meet with people all over the world. I have a right. two-day coaching program where I'm on site with them, and then we work together over a year. But I've never stayed in someone's house before. And so what wound up happening is I got to see it all. I got to see the family dynamics. I got to see the uh, they, they had a staff. They had quasi-staff um, come in. I got to see the friend dynamic when they switched off work, when they switched on work. Yeah. And it really gave the most clear visual I'd ever had of working with a client. But to prepare for that, I needed to do my own little visioning. So what was something interesting that you saw in the mindset and the, I guess, um, actions of an Olympic athlete on a daily basis? Extremely coachable. Hmm. So coachable I actually had to pull back on how many pieces of advice or how many ideas because I knew what I said she would do, which is a little bit different from a lot of the corporate or the startup founders that I work with. I mean, especially the, the bootstrap set right now because they're always going over to a new website and finding the seven ways to do this, the four keys to that, three things not to do every day. And they're just, they're just trying to do everything. Basically, my client said, she told me, she says, Jason, I'm a former gold medal winning Olympic athlete. The reason I got to the gold medal is I listened to my coaches yeah. tell me what to do. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find the best and the biggest things for you because yeah. I, I didn't want to waste her time. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So the ideal day, what's another action step that people should be doing? Knowing the conditions around when you're at your highest level of performance. I call this activity at my best when. Now, whenever I ask someone, I say, hey, you know, when are you at your best? They'll usually start off with a temporal answer, right? Oh, I'm best in the morning or I'm best late at night. Great, fantastic. Let's get the time condition out there. But now let's go to the other ones. So, for example, I'm at my best when I eat a complete balanced breakfast early in the morning. I'm at my best when I reach out to someone for help before I need it. I'm at my best when I capture my agreements and processes as I make them. Um, I've been known in the past to say yes to someone. And then because I said so many yeses in a week, at the end of the week, I kind of forgot who I said yes to. I don't do that anymore because that's not me at my best. So the activity, pull out a piece of paper, open up a Word doc, go to your Evernote notebook, whatever you use to capture information, and just put a little list. I always ask clients to get eight, maybe 15 conditions. Say, here are the things that if I did, the likelihood of me having a good day go up. Mm -hmm. And then I can kind of take a look at that. Uh, my recommendation is always to take a look at it early in the day so that if I'm on, no, if I'm off course, I can get back on. Yeah. So what's the hardest one for you that's on your list to actually follow through? Like for me, like getting enough sleep would be up there and that is definitely a big challenge for me because I feel like I have so much to do. I stay up way too late and don't get enough sleep. What What is that for you? Let me let me respond to that one because yeah. you open the door. Go You're ahead. Um, <laughs> I'll share with you the most difficult one for me. Yeah. So at my best when, if I ask someone, hey, when are you at my best? When are you at your best? And they say, oh, I'm at my best when I get enough sleep. Yeah. What we'll do then, Jeremy, is we'll back it up and say, what do you need to do to get enough sleep? Mm -hmm. So instead of saying sleep is the indicator, it's what are these other seven things that are the indicators of that condition? Mm -hmm. 
And generally, it has to do, well, I could kind of let it to those of you watching to think of. Right. Um, I know if I'm on the road in a different time zone and I'm at a client dinner, there are things I can very easily do that will negatively impact my sleep. For sure. Usually, it has to do with food, alcohol, and nutrition intake. Right. Uh, if I eat two desserts, I don't sleep as well. If I drink the extra beer, I don't sleep as well. Uh, if I don't get a workout in before the dinner on the different time zone. So, sure. so I, I love that that response, Jeremy, because it's so it's it's real. Right. Uh, anybody who's watching this who has who has a, a newborn or you yeah. know kid a, a kid at all, but you know how quickly that that can impact that rest time. You're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. part of it. Uh, h- hardest one for me yeah. is asking for help. You know, I still run this thing. I still run this. You know, I, I don't know if it's called the founder's dilemma, but I, I think that I can do things better, faster than than anybody else. But darn it, I know, I know how valuable it is when I raise my hand. I let people know very specifically where I'm challenged, and then I I let that world show up and and help me in in the ways that they can. Is there a particular thing that's harder for you to ask for help on your business than other things? There's not a specific thing. It's all the things that I have self-judgment on that I should be able to do. Hmm. I should be able to create content. I should be able to design my own workbook. I should be able to create the PowerPoint. I should be able to Hmm. update the website. I was like, darn it, if I know what the paragraph is and I know what the picture is, I, I really need to be taking that half an hour it would take me to implement and give that half an hour or hour to someone else because yeah. I can hand that off in five minutes. That just, I mean, Jeremy, if I do that three times a day, that's 90 minutes more thinking, mm. client interaction, or follow-up. For sure. That's a good one. I definitely have to do more of that too. Um, any last action step that we should include for people? I'm looking at my notes here. Yeah, let me let me give you my favorite end of the day process. And uh, I don't know if anybody remembers, but long, long time ago, Hallmark, the card store, used to give away calendars every year. And they'd give a little pocket size mm-hmm. calendar. Yeah. As a high school teacher, I'm thinking free is good, so uh, I, I I use those for like five years. Anyway, at the end of the day, I've been doing this since 1997. At the end of the day, I write in my journal. I have a, a little notebook. It's got one page. It's about the size of a three by five note card. And I answer to three prompts A, C, G. So A stands for acknowledgement. What can I look back on the day and acknowledge? What happened? What occurred? What, what can I just note? What can I put my attention on that occurred during that day? C stands for completion. What did I complete? What's done? What, what do I not have to look back on? I don't know if anybody's had the experience where you thought something was complete and then two days later it came back. Uh, what I love to do is, is just have that closure process at the end of the day. And then G stands for gratitude. What am I grateful for? What am I thankful for? What has meaning to me personally, professionally, familially? And that little process I, I attribute to I sleep better at night, I wake up more rested, I've not done any hard science on this one, so don't ask me about the actual numbers. But I can tell you the difference I feel when at night I make a to-do list for tomorrow versus at night when I do acknowledgement, completion, and gratitude. There is a difference that I've found. So that would be the last one that I would leave you. You know what? Try, try it for five days, folks. Get, get just five three-by-five note cards. Put them next to your nightstand with a pen, A-C-G. Yeah. What can I acknowledge? What did I complete? And for what am I grateful? What was a, a gratitude one that you wrote down maybe on a tough day? Do you remember any of those tough days and you found a good one, something to be grateful for on that day? Jeremy, I'm not thinking of anything specific. I, I'm, I'm reflecting on a difficult period yeah, yeah. That, that Jody and I had. And I can remember writing things down, and and it was um, I don't know if you've ever seen that book. I forget the guy's name. The Book of Awesome. Do you ever see that it, guy? I've heard of. I, I can't yeah. picture it, but I definitely. Well, 
what wound up happening, we, we saw him at TED uh, a couple years ago. What wound up happening to him was the same thing that happened to me, which is I kind of ran out of things to be grateful for until I realized I was grateful for the captain of the airplane who landed the plane safely. <laughs> yes. I was grateful for the second monitor I had at my desk station. I was grateful for the fresh squeezed orange juice from my tree outside. And I started realizing, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm dealing with this very difficult period, but right. darn it, I got it good. Yeah, just the things we take for granted. Yeah, everyday things. Yeah. Um, so, Jason, um, thank you so much. This has been amazing. You always tell the best stories, and before we end, I want you to tell people a little bit what you're excited about, what you're working on now. You know, we we started this program called Get Momentum, and in that. We started getting requests from members saying, you know, the, the virtual stuff is nice. I, I write a white paper every month. I put on a town hall webinar every month. I go interview someone every month. All of yeah. that's the monthly package. Yeah. But we started doing in-person group community events. Oh, nice. And we call them leadership. We call it the Get Momentum Ojai Leadership Retreat. And so twice a year, we invite people to come to Ojai, a beautiful town in, in central California. And for three and a half days, actually 3.65 days, you spend 1% of your year planning the next 99%. Wow. So in 3.65 days, we're going to take a look at where do you want to be 12 months from now and what are the kinds of things that the community can support you with in getting there. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. And um, I guess on a, on a more consistent and more regular note, uh, I think we're going to hit 180 podcasts. Wow! This congratulations! Week. And that's, that's been a huge every feat. Friday. Every Friday morning, I produce a five to seven minute podcast, and that's over on the iTunes podcast store and Stitcher Radio. Yeah, uh, it's called Your Best Just Got Better. All right, check out Your Best Just Got Better. So, Jason, I know you mentioned the Big Brother uh, story. What's another favorite story from the Get Momentum program? That's a break. Someone had a breakthrough or huge breakthrough and breaking through. So three members who came to the retreat in February, they're actually returning to the retreat. There are three of the 15, 16 people coming back. Um, they started a mini accountability group amongst the three of them. And actually, I didn't find out about it till eight weeks after the end of the retreat. They all concocted this thing while they were together here in Ojai. They went through eight weeks where they were spending an hour a week nice. on a three-way phone call, one from New Hampshire, one from New York, and one from California, holding each other accountable to the steps that they wanted to take on. Well, one person is about to start his own speaking, coaching, consulting business. One guy has been in job interviews to move down to New York City, and another woman in here in California has had her art studio business take off. And this is in less than five, six months. Hmm. So what I was impressed upon and shouldn't be, but was surprised by, communities will form given the opportunity to get together. Yeah. And that, that to me is what Get Momentum is all about. It can't be about Jody and I, me and Jody. It can't be about us being the the... Right. whatever you call that. It's got to be about get the community of like-minded people together. You know, one one question I get, Jeremy, often is, you know, who's Get Momentum for? Is it for startups? Is it for organizational leaders? Is it for CEOs? The only denominator that I've been able to clarify, Get Momentum is for those of you whose personal, professional development is your responsibility. Yeah. If you're responsible for your own professional development, learning more about your trade, learning more about your community, learning more about yourself, learning more about whatever it is, then, then Get Momentum is the support mechanism for that. Yeah. And I want to talk to you for the next three hours, but I'm going to limit it to one last question. Um, you know, you mentioned something interesting about the Olympic athlete. They're very coachable. Not everyone comes on as coachable. So how do you work with that? It's a great question, Jeremy. It's 
great question. Uh, you know, for, for those of you who are in advising roles, mentoring roles, coaching roles, you, you've had the experience of, of looking at someone across the table from you or across the video or across the phone. You know the advice you're giving is sound, and you also know intuitively they're not going to take it. So what have I done over the past few years? Well, we've, we've, we've made it. How do I say this? We've made it more difficult to work with us, and we've done that in two different, very specific ways. Number one, we do an intake interview with people where we look at what it is they've done, what it is that they think they should be doing, and what their goals are. Yeah. And I can generally tell Jeremy in that intake how seriously they're going to take, not themselves and not me, but how seriously they're going to take the process. Right. And then the other thing, and this is where I separate a coach from a mentor. As a coach, we have, we have uh, rates, we have fees that are quite substantial. Because I know that when people pay for the information they're getting, they need to be able to say that that payment was worth it. Right, yeah. No, that's, that's good. We need to qualify our customers more probably. Yeah. Jason? I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Jeremy, as always, it's, it's great sharing this. And if anybody has any questions, please email me. Um, Jeremy, if we can put my email. Yeah, go ahead. You want to say it now so people. Jason at WomackCompany.com. Yeah. Over on Twitter, Jason Womack. And we'll link it everything up too. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, my man.